about your business. So, you know, what I have the designing skill, where in Nigeria of today, where we know that we'll obviously have some knowledge gap. So, I, as the owner of my business, I need to equip myself so that even when those lapses do occur, I'm able to bridge that gap and be in charge of my operations. Mrs. Ekwan is another grateful beneficiary of the Business Development Fund for Women, but so. I was tried it at the initial stage, getting short-term funds. And in manufacturing in Nigeria, I don't need such funds. Because even before you have utilized the money, you're paying back. Why are you paying back? As if you are paying back their money. So I said, you know what? I just, you know, like a dream. I didn't even know it existed. I said, home truth. I was just talking, you know. I need funds. I can even get more to moratorium to even stabilize to even at least the machine when you get a new tailor it takes about two months for that tailor really becomes productive so the running costs all the mistakes the person will make you know the, all of that will come from your pocket at a point until definitely maybe from the third month it begins to give you back and you know, get our and run investment in the tailor so i tell him all of this and I say you know what but for it's for you and it's going to be like office we got talking and well the rest is history a long process though <laughs> it's a child long process but to be sincere, the process also helped me. I must give it to them. They're very thorough. Very, very thorough. The way I, the way I did that business plan, eh? ask questions. But guess what? In the process of answering those questions, truthfully, I also rediscovered myself. You know, I understood my business better. I learned to put pen to paper better. Because it's when you're defending it to, to get these funds that you really need. So the process will be fair to them. It was Herculean, I must say, but it was a good process for me. I learned, I grew from it. When the money came, ah, you will appreciate that money and you put it to good use. <laughs> Yet another beneficiary of Bodfo is Asha Palatables in Okota, still in Lagos. They can do your outdoor catering for you for your events of all levels. But what they are focusing on most is making of bread, one of the staple foods of Nigerians. Even from outside the building of Asha Palatables, which is located at number 9 Ogunfowoko Street, in Okota, Lagos, it's obvious that there's an ongoing production. The nature of work is revealed on entering the bakery. Flour, butter and other bread ingredients are spread everywhere. This is the line of work which Mrs. Ngozi Egesio Para has chosen based on our earlier contact with a similar organization. After looking for, after graduation, looking for a job for several years and not finding any, um, and I decided to venture into something I've once practiced. Yeah, yeah. So, and that was how I delved into this profession. So where and when did you practice it before? When I was in the university. Each time we have any um, holiday, I'm always in a, way, in a bakery. I'm always attached to a particular um, bakery, as, um, best man confessionaries. I always go there because I have this kind of flair for all these things. So. Most times I go there to, to really learn. The ingredients spread everywhere, after some time, find their way to the spiral mixer, the major source of the grinding sound. Mixing ended, cutting and shaping of the dough is next. Although Asha Palatable prefers manual sizing, the use of a scale is regarded as extremely important. When you mold with your hands, and when you use that machine, I've noticed it. The one that you mold with your hands comes out well. But you know, because of the stress of that um, molding with, 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 you know, manually, that's why we have to like, okay, let's use machines so that for high productivity. But you see, this, all this um, local way of doing things, when you do it, it comes out, that, that's the retest that it comes out with.
and then the dough is set aside for proving. While waiting for it to retain the required size, the fire is prepared. In this case, it's a firewood oven. It's cheaper, considering the, the cost of foliage, as in dieseling and stuff like that. But this thing is a, it's a dual oven. It's um, a um, burner, and the burner makes use of them. It, um, it's, the, it's the diesel that powers the burner. So, you know the cost of diesel is too high, so we have to go to um, at least the firewood, which is cheaper. The oven is heated and then the dough is moved in. Although they produce regular bread, Asha has created a niche for itself in the midst of competition. We've come to this particular round bread, this round cake bread. We've come to stay in this particular because most bakeries they run away from this particular round bread because it's a kind of strenuous thing. The the the, the time the time used to do this round bread, you used it to do more than maybe for one bag or you used to do up, up to five bags of slice. But you see, because this has always been my trademark, I, I, I've, I've been into it, and thank God, even in this particular area, I see if I'm leading in this particular area when it comes to this round bread. In operation for three years and counting, Asha Palatable says there's fluctuation in the bread market, but business is good and shows signs of getting even better, especially with the new innovations and patterns in the market. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, over 165 million naira has already been disbursed through Botfo. That means that there's a whole lot more about Botfo that cannot be captured on this episode of the program. But the general manager of SMEs of the Bank of Industry, Mr. Abdulganiu, will give us details of what they have done with the rest of the money. Botfo is business development fund for women. And that was essentially one of the steps taken by the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs, you know, on gender mainstreaming. That's how the whole thing started. Because it was necessary to create a platform for female entrepreneurs to operate. Because we know if you fund a woman, I'll say it in my own words, you fund a woman, you are feeding a family, you are feeding a nation, because women are very enterprising, very hardworking, and these days they support the men folk. So all those things were realized, and it was not an issue of women just sitting down at home doing nothing. I mean, there was a need for them to also generate some form of uh, income, to be almost financially independent, because at the end of the day, whatever money they make goes back to the family. So that was one aspect of it, you know, gender mainstreaming and empowering women. And um, if you may wish to know, BOI was the first bank in the country that set up a gender desk in recognition of the needs of women because, I mean, we all know there's a way a man will attend to a female uh, customer, for instance which is different from the way a woman will do that because a woman will sit down very patiently, listen to her and you know, allow her to do her chit chats and, and at the end of the day, you still achieve the same objective of providing funding, empowering and solving the problems of that female entrepreneur. Probably the man will just be like, he won't even have the time to listen to all those little, little because at least the woman wants you to listen. She might have issues outside the business. See, and she wants somebody to share this with while discussing business with you. And whether you like it or not, those problems at the end of the day might affect the business. So it's necessary to have somebody to listen to that aspect of it. You know, at the end of the day, 